We are moving on to a, a second um, focus topic, and that is research. Uh, we begin with Professor John Swafield, who will share his research on the non-invasive, non-destructive, and remote identification of depleted appliance water trap seals. And believe me, this topic sounds much more interesting when Professor Swafield says it in his Scottish accent than me saying it. Um, John is Emeritus Professor of Building Engineering at the, uh, in the School of the Built Environment at Harriet Watt University, Harriet Watt University in Edinburgh, Scotland. He was the head of the school until his retirement a couple of years ago in 2008. His research has involved water conservation and the numerical modeling of transient flows in uh, transient flows in building drainage and vent systems. He is responsible for several patents and product developments, including the PAPA surge attenuator and the defective trap seal detection methodology developed in partnership with IATMO, WPC, Industry, and the UK Research Council. So please welcome Professor Wafia. We are running a few minutes early, so if you have some extra material or extra questions, we can entertain them. Well, thank you very much for uh, allowing me to come to talk to you today. It's a real pleasure again to be in the U.S. and to talk to our old friends at IAPMO. Uh, and I'm going to be talking about rather more than just the, the PAPA uh, because I uh, have sort of changed the title a little bit to talk about research partnerships to meet the problems that we have. And that will include the um, uh, trap seal detection device towards the end. But I think the challenges are rather bigger than that. So I'd like to perhaps start by just identifying some of the challenges that I think we actually face. I mean, first of all, obviously, climate uh, change-driven water shortages and excesses, uh, feast and famine at the same time in terms of water, will actually stress uh, water supply and drainage provision. I think if we look at the developing megacities in the world, uh, China, South America, we will see that uh, there's going to be considerable stress on the provision of uh, infrastructure that we have there. In developed countries, such as the US and the UK and Europe, there's an interesting demographic coming about in that we are having more and more single occupier dwellings, which in actual fact perversely uses more water than if you actually shared with somebody per capita. Uh, we're going to have difficulty in the developing world with a lack of planning controls, the number of people who live in a building. We design a building for, against a particular likely usage, but in actual fact, we have no control of how many people will actually use that building. And finally, we uh, are now exporting our national codes internationally. And that means that if you were sitting in an office in Dubai, you might actually have a choice of five or six previously national codes to choose from, so you can cherry pick the bits of each code which you would think would be most beneficial and easier for you to actually design your building. And quite simply, some of these things don't fit together. So uh, there are some real challenges for us. Now, I think that these challenges have been one of the objectives of the World Plumbing Council has been to address these issues. And the way to address them is through partnership. And what I'm going to give you in the next 25 minutes, hopefully, is an example of three partnership effects that we've been in involved with at Harriet Watt uh, to solve real problems. Uh, we're going to look at two examples of bad design, which have led to public health problems due to cross-contamination. Uh, and as you'll see in the first example, uh, basically, uh, resulting in conditions which none of us in this room would even consider tolerating. And then finally, uh, a third uh, action, which is to look at um, how we can improve our designs for unusual buildings. Now, this is the um, packed in housing estate in Hong Kong. It's a typical example of um, a uh, Hong Kong building, 50 stories high, a main services duct running up the, the middle of the building, bathrooms at the back here. Uh, all the external drainage systems are on the outside of the building. So everything comes out through the walls into the vertical stacks and flows down here. Uh, no control about how many people live in this building. 
uh, designed against some form of standard, which we're not sure, but I think that this will show you what happens in that building in the first five to ten stories due to surcharge at the bottom of the vertical stack. All right, so this is uh, an example of the conditions of these people were living in uh, to the point where sandbags were used when you were not actually using the facility yourself. Now, what causes this? We all know that as the water falls down the vertical stack, it drags air with it. And, of course, if we surcharge the bottom of the stack, we kill that airflow. We get basically a water hammer in air for every meter a second of airflow that you destroy, you generate 40 millimeters of water gauge. So in other words, two meters a second destroyed will blow your traps. This is the absolutely appalling design at the bottom of the world's vertical stacks. I mean, you know, I cannot imagine how that was designed. But it isn't going to be changed because it's there and no one's going to pay to change that. So we have to find a way of remedial activity. Now, what we have, this is the what happens. Water comes out of the trap. If you have any experience of mainstream water hammer in civil engineering, you know that what you do to avoid water hammer is to slow down the effect. In other words, instead of slamming a valve shut, you close the valve slowly. And what we've invented is a thing called the PAPA, which allows the airflow to be diverted and slowly decelerated. This is just a, a bag which blows up four liters in volume. And that allows the effect to be uh, ameliorated. So uh, we invented this PAPA device. We're going to show you some videos of how this actually works. Um, little rig here to show you how it works, because if you can remember this, it'll help you with the videos. We put water down a vertical stack here. We can surcharge at the bottom. We have a, a trap up here that we'll be looking at continuously, and we have a couple of positions for these uh, surge attenuators. So let's have a look at the first slide. This is the base of the stack, and we can simulate a surcharge. There we go so we can generate the air pressure that we want to use. And what we can do now is have a look at what happens to that trap when that happens. So there we are, we've got water going down the vertical stack, and in a moment we will surcharge, and we can see that in that condition we have blown the trap. In other words, exactly what's happening in, in Hong Kong. Now this is uh, an uncased papa. In other words, what you've got here is a four liter uh, variable containment device, a bag, which will uh, blow up when the pressure comes onto it. And we'll see that what happens initially when you pour water down the vertical stack is that, of course, the pressure drops in the, in the stack, and you will see that the, uh, ta the, the bag actually uh, flattens. We just wait a moment, there we are, it's flattened. And in a moment, we should have our surge. There we go. So what you saw being blown out of the trap a minute ago has now been removed. If we add a second PAPA to that system further up, we can see that uh, we can get an even more beneficial result. That's it. Okay, so we've killed that pressure transient completely. 